Hello and welcome back to the Ground Up Advanced Flight Tutorials. Thank you very much for joining me this video. Uh, last time out, we did three videos on crosswinds. So we did two videos of theory on crosswinds and then one video where I did a bit of demonstrations where I initially thought I was going to do two videos, but it ended up one video was going to be enough. Don't worry if you haven't quite yet got the hang of crosswinds. We will be doing a bit more work in the crosswind sort of area when we do a few more solo style flights. So the there is that there is that to look forward to and you will get plenty more uh, sort of experience with crosswinds as we do this but today we're going to start a whole separate section a section where in real world flying this is taught pretty early on but in this I've I'm going to I've taught it what 12 lessons in well, I'm going to teach it 12 lessons in merely because I want to I wanted you guys to get a feel for this beforehand because I'm sure everyone who's new to flying and following this series will have experienced this in some which way and anyone who's experienced has probably experienced this at some point and any pilots who are watching this probably have already practiced this or will be practicing this very very soon so the topic of discussion today the topic of learning today is going to be stalls and spins now we're going to stay on the ground probably in this video uh, so don't expect to get up in the air in this video this is going to be theory but the next video will be doing a lot of demonstrations so all we're going to do here is we're going to really learn everything we need to know about stalls and spins uh, possibly just about stalls today because there is it is a lot and stalls are always a precursor to a spin you can't spin an aircraft without stalling an aircraft you'll only end up keeping very good control of the aircraft in weird configurations until a wing does not stall a spin cannot occur so we really need to understand how a wing stalls why a wing stalls now the first thing I need to do is I'm going to show you this over here remember this so we had the airspeed indicator and we've got tape here this green one and this white bar, uh, white bar or white bit of tape and green bit of tape here that's what we really want to be focusing on is this lower limit over here at 55 and 60 knots respectively for the flap limit and the clean configuration so clean means no flaps dirty means you've got flaps full flaps so full flaps there 55 clean configuration 60 knots is the stall speed of the aircraft now what does that mean what does stall speed mean so stall speed is the speed at which the wing will not support the aeroplane without exceeding the angle of attack a critical angle of attack and that is the stalling speed so what that means is that when it gets below these speeds the aircraft will not be able to fly without exceeding a critical angle of attack which means the aircraft is going to stall which means it won't be able to maintain lift so how how does this work what what is this well first of all stalls what is a stall we've all stalled a car at some point if you don't drive then maybe you haven't but everyone who drives has stalled a car at some point whether it's because it was a new car whether you're learning how to drive or something's gone wrong with the car and the engine has stalled a stall in a car is not the same as a stall um, in, an, in an aircraft uh, I'm gonna show you right now a stall in an aircraft is uh, how am I gonna do this uh, no power uh, I, I feel I feel like this is a bad idea I'm not going to show you. You, you. you know what a stall is. You know what uh, the engine dying, the equivalent is of a car to a, to an aircraft. That's the engine dying. That is not a stall in terms of flying. A stall in terms of flying. And for this, we're going to have to go outside. Nice aircraft. Um, we're going to go, have to go outside over here and bear with the sound of the propeller. You know what? I've got an idea. I just feel like that might make it a little bit quiet outside. No, it's just changed the pitch very slightly. Never mind. Okay, well that's no good. Um, but anyway, let's get back to this. Stalling is where the airflow over the wing separates at the back. So wh what does that mean? What, what does all this mean? Well, let's say we've got the air, let's say we're on the ground like this or we're flying through the air in this exact configuration and we're flying at an incredibly low speed for example that stall limit that you saw on the airspeed indicator let's say 60 because we've got our flaps up we're going at 60 knots or just above 60 knots 
what's going to happen is that at 60 knots we're actually going to have this aircraft flying at a to keep the vertical speed zero to keep the aircraft straight and level or sp more specifically just level the angle of attack on this aircraft is going to have to increase so that means that the aircraft is going to have to be pitched up you note you'll see this oops you see this when we're coming into land you don't have the nose pitched all the way down because you're going at a slower speed the aircraft is somewhat pitched up because you've got to have a certain angle of attack on the wing so that you can maintain lift so the airflow comes over here goes over the top wing goes uh, goes over the top of the wing goes over the bottom of the wing it reattaches at the back and you've got a, a pressure gradient or a pressure difference and that causes the aircraft to stay in the sky that causes the aircraft to maintain maintain lift so what we're looking at here is something called a coefficient of lift so if we were to draw a graph every aircraft has if we were to put coefficient of lift on the y-axis and we we're going to put angle of attack on the x-axis every aircraft has a coefficient of lift at the zero angle of attack it has some coefficient of lift so let's say this is our zero angle of attack right here it has a coefficient of lift which means that the aircraft will lift at certain at a certain or you know, in a certain configuration at a certain speed it will lift up what will then happen is that as the angle of attack increases the lift coefficient increases which makes natural sense when you pull up on the stick you climb faster but at a certain point the angle of attack increase will no longer match the the increase in the coefficient of lift so it's no longer a linear straight line it's no longer a linear pattern to this the coefficient of lift will start tapering off so that when you get to let's say 35 I'm just going to give an example 35 degrees of lift it starts tapering off and at 40 degrees of lift it starts you're not going to get any more lift or the coefficient of lift is not going to be any higher at 35 degrees than it is at 40 degrees now the thing about this is if we think about the equation for lift so this is this is where things get a little bit more technical a little bit more engineering if you want to know all this um, if you want to know all this in a lot more detail then if you support me on patreon and uh, do more than five dollars on the patreon rewards you do get access to the flight sim tutorials channel on the discord and over there i can go into this for hours with all sorts of equations and all that stuff but if you just want to know how to fly it what happens and how to recover then this is more than enough for you but you know if you want to support me then please be be my guest a uh, link to that is in the description box below but one equation i am going to cover here is lift the equation for lift the equations for lift is given by and this is um it's not the the easiest thing to probably i might i might put it up on screen you know i might actually put this up on screen but it's the coefficient of lift multiplied by and if you put this in brackets it's going to be oh actually better still the coefficient of lift multiplied by the wing area is the first thing you want to do so the wing so the larger the wing the more lift you're going to get this makes sense you know larger aircraft have larger wings so that they can lift more weight because obviously if you can't lift the weight of the aircraft then well you haven't got an aircraft you, you you've just got a sort of a boat or not even a boat a boat sink you you've just got a tube that does nothing and goes nowhere so coefficient of lift which we just talked about multiplied by the wing area that's the first part the second part is you take the density so that that's actually the air density multiplied by the square of the velocity and divide that by two so the density multiplied by the square of the velocity divided by two all multiplied by the wing area and multiplied by the coefficient of lift so as you can see here what that is telling us is that if the air density is different your lift is going to be different which we know about this if you've got less if the air density is lower your lift is going to be lower it, at the same if everything else is the same if you have a smaller wing your lift is going to be lower if you are going slower your lift is going to be lower and if your coefficient of lift changes your lift is going to be lower your total lift so at the moment we don't want to worry about velocity because that that's not what causes a stall it's not speed 
that causes a stall. What causes a stall is a high angle of attack. So it's not the velocity that causes the drop in lift that causes a stall. It is the high angle of attack that causes a drop in the coefficient of lift, which then causes the drop in the velocity, which then causes the stall. That's how a stall works. So what we've got to really, really focus on here is that coefficient of lift and the angle of attack make, having an effect on it. So if we have an angle of attack now that is at 35 degrees or 40 degrees, let's say, and that's where it's going to stall. What's happening here is the airflow is coming along here. It's got to the it's got to the front section of the wing. It's gone down, and then it's sort of lost the attachment to the wing. So over here you can see that shape of the wing, the cambered shape of the wing there, the aerofoil shape is what we call it. It goes over the top at whatever angle it's going in at and maybe halfway down the wing it breaks it loses it or even a quarter way down the wing at the quarter chord point or something it breaks and it shoots off sort of in a different direction so it goes over the wing over there and then shoots off the bottom of the wing stays attached because obviously it's it's sort of hitting the wing at a very sharp angle now when it stays attached that one comes off the tip of the wing correctly but at the back there's this flow separation so that's where these two streamlines that you just imagine two lines that are flowing along with the wing are no longer rejoining or reattaching at the back there's no reattachment on the back of the wing that is the stall that is where the wing has stalled that wing can no longer produce lift on the aircraft what it is doing though, and this is why your velocity slows down, is because when the aircraft, when the air is hitting it, it's now a much bigger surface to hit and it's causing drag. So now you've lost you've lost the stall, you've lost the coefficient of lift. You haven't got lift anymore. Your coefficient of lift has gone zero. Your coefficient of lift is zero, it doesn't matter how fast you're going, you're gonna stall the aircraft. What happens though is that because of the way an aircraft is designed, your coefficient of lift is not going to generally get to zero apart from in very specific conditions um, whilst you're doing high speed. It's always going to be at low speed. That's where the coefficient of lift becomes zero. It goes, it's at low speed and it's always when you've got drag slowing the aircraft down and this induced drag is what we call it. That slows the aircraft down. Your wing can no longer produce lift and as such there isn't enough to keep the aircraft in the sky it can't handle the weight and the aircraft falls to the ground. That is essentially a stall. So that's what a stall means in terms of aircraft, in terms of aerodynamics. And when we talk about stalls in aircraft, we're not talking about the engine flooding or the engine dying randomly or kicking out a clutch too easily by mistake. Uh, you know, these th that's not what a stall is on an, on an aircraft. A stall is aerodynamic. It's talking about losing the lift on a wing. So. Now that we've covered that, let's go on. And by the way, this information you will be able to find online all over the place. You know, if you want to learn more about the lift equation, I'm sure NASA has a whole bunch on it. Um, you know, you will find this information that I am telling you in a variety of places all over the place. What I'm trying to do here is I'm trying to give it a more practical use. And I'm trying to explain it in a much more uh, user friendly way, uh, easier for people who don't know so much about engineering and aerodynamics. I'm trying to explain it in that way and to be able to give you guys an idea of how to correct for it from a pilot's perspective. So we're now going to go on to the types of stalls. So we've got three types of stalls that we really need to uh, understand. And we've got power on stalls and power off stalls. Those are the two main types. The third type I'm going to explain and it's actually something if you watched a Flight Sim World video I made on the P-40 Kitty Hawk or Warhawk whatever you, you guys want to call it. Uh, the Kitty Hawk video I made I at the end of that video I believe I stalled the wing and that's the third type of stall so I'll talk about that and I stalled the wing at about 300 miles an hour so that's where that's what I was saying about it's very rare and it's only specific cases where it actually happens at a high speed. But let's start with the power on stalls or the departure stall. So what is a departure stall? A departure stall is where, well, think about it. You've got the power on at a certain, at a certain speed, maybe full power, maybe 80% power. You've, you've lifted the nose of the aircraft and you stall the aircraft. And what's happened there? Well, what's happened is you've the angle of attack for the aircraft has increased too rapidly and 
given the speed and everything of the airflow, the airflow has separated. So the speed, the airflow wasn't fast enough. It couldn't maintain that ang on that angle of attack. You have separated the the flow on the wing. The wing cannot generate lift. The aircraft drops. The aircraft slows down and drops. It may not even slow down. You may be doing 60. You may be like, okay, I'm going to take off at 60 knots. Done it. Pull back. Next thing you know, you're in the ground again. That's a power on stall. Obviously called a departure stall because the most common way you could do it is on departure. This can occur. Let's get a little bit more quiet and still over here. This generally occurs when a pilot cannot maintain positive pitch control when you're doing a short field takeoff. So for example, your flaps could be all the way down like that and that's going to make the aircraft more sluggish. It means that m minute movements are going to, because you're taking off in a very short short space, you're taking off in a very at a very slow speed, minute movements could stall the wing. And that's exactly what happens here. And maybe you haven't trimmed the aircraft correctly, so the aircraft, the elevator suddenly wanted to lift, or the trim setting on the elevators wanted to lift very, very suddenly. And that's caused the aircraft to nose up far more than you would have wanted to. And because you're going so slow, the angle of attack has caused that coefficient of lift to go to zero, and the aircraft's plummeted back into the ground. That's a departure stall. The second type of stall is called an arrival stall and this is a power off stall. So this is the kind of stall that happens and probably the kind of stall that you've all experienced if you've stalled an aircraft in a simulator or in real life. You know, if you've done it in real life, then may maybe you've experienced this as well. Um, this is when you're landing an aircraft or, you know, coming in from base leg to final. So we've done all about circuits. So make sure you learn about circuits before watching this video. But, you know, when we're coming in from over there, we're coming in and we're coming into final. As we do the turn or something, we're at a very low speed and we've we've done a bit of cross control with the rudder and stuff like that. I'll talk all a bit more about this on demonstrations. What happens is you the same thing happens. You lose the lift on the aircraft. The coefficient of lift goes to zero because of the angle of attack. You're going very slow. When you're landing an aircraft, you're not doing 120, 130 knots in an aircraft like this anyway you can't land an aircraft like this at 130 knots sure if you're flying a boeing 737 you can but the reason you have to land a boeing 737 at a higher speed is exactly this you don't want to stall the aircraft because if you're going at a higher speed you can have a lower coefficient of lift to maintain the lift but as you start increasing the angle of attack at a lower speed the coefficient of lift is going to get to that critical point where it stalls, which is why you'll see aircraft have to have flaps to make sure that you can lower the angle of attack and therefore lower the coefficient of, uh, and therefore have a high coefficient of lift at a lower angle of attack because of the shape of the wing and therefore maintaining a lower speed. So it's not the speed, again, very, very important. It's not the speed that causes the stall. It's the coefficient of lift going to zero that causes the stall. That's very, very important to remember. Very, very important. So, on the power of stall, what happens here? So, like I said, a lot of these stalls and spins occur when you're turning in to final, from base leg onto final, um, because you skidded the aircraft. Remember when I talked about correctly banked turns? If you've got an incorrectly banked turn and you're going so slow, you may stall just one wing. Literally, if you just stall one wing because of the way the wing is turned and remember I talked about angle of attack and you'll have more airflow over one wing than the other wing and because of that you could stall one of the two wings and if you stall one wing then you're going to spin because suddenly this wing can let's say you're, you're turning in and you stall this wing no longer providing any lift this one's providing lift this one's going to try and flip you around and this one, because of the, the rudder is not, you're not in a correctly banked turn, the rudder is going to try and kick you out further or not kick you out enough. It's going to do the opposite to what you want to do. And next thing you know, your aircraft is going back towards the ground. This is mostly down to improper control. Like I said, if you don't have good control of the aircraft and if you're coming on to final, if you don't have good control of the airspeed. Remember I said about smooth airspeeds? You've got to keep a steady airspeed as you're coming into land. So again, even though it's not the reason an aircraft stalls, it is a contributing factor. It actually comes, it's sort of a secondary 
things. So the coefficient of lift is the primary, which then causes other things to happen. The third one is accelerated stalls. So accelerated stalls occur at the higher speeds. So the higher than normal speeds, like I said, when I was doing 300 miles an hour or something, um, and it was, I think I was in that Warhawk or Kitty Hawk, and I pulled back on the stick. I was doing a very, very heavy, steep turn, you know, almost, I think it was an 85 degree turn or something, 85 degree bank on the turn, and that caused the wing to stall. Now, these are very, very sudden. These are very, very unexpected. And when they happen, you just have to recover from, you just have to recover them very, very quickly. They're very unexpected, they're very sudden, and you're not going to get it in an aircraft like this unless you make a very, very sudden movement on the aircraft. So let's say you're doing 160 knots and suddenly you just turn the wing sideways and pull up or something. Then you're going to stall the wing. Once you stall the wing, you're going to stall the aircraft at 160 knots and you're going to plummet out the sky. And this is what I mean about velocity not being the reason an aircraft stalls because you could do 160 knots and still stall an aircraft like this. You could be doing 300 miles an hour hour in a military jet and still stall it it's about the coefficient of lift so now that we've done that we need to understand how to recover from a stall so we're going to go on to recovering from a stall we spent 20 minutes talking about how what a stall is and how it works so let's talk about recovering from a stall and how to get into a stall to start off let's go for a recovery let's go back inside because that's just doing my head in there we go back inside nice and calm Okay, right. How are we going to recover from a stall? So the key factor, the most important thing in recovering from a stall is to regain control of the aircraft. That's the most important thing. It's not trying to get out of the stall by pitching it down or making movements on the ailerons or rudders. It's regaining the basic control of the aircraft. So how do we regain control of the aircraft? By dropping the nose of the aircraft because what we're trying to do here is where did the stall occur the stall occurred because the angle of attack was too high on the wing so we were pitched up too far that's why the stall occurred so the way to recover from it is to pitch the nose down that's the way not by turning the aircraft into the stall or in into the way the aircraft's trying to fall or anything like that. no no that's that's bad that's going to lead you into a spin Especially if you try and use the rudder, that's going to lead you into a spin. The correct way to do it is by reducing the angle of attack. So the way I tend to do it is I'm going up, let's say I'm doing a power on stall. I'm flying, I've stalled the aircraft. I will first of all reduce power to the throttle. I will reduce the power to idle. Now why do I do this? Well remember when I spoke about doing takeoffs and we we talked about how the aircraft will pull to the left because of more airflow because of the engine and the way that the torque of the engine and the way the airflow goes over the left wing is different to the airflow going over the right wing which is why it's easier to turn the aircraft left than it is to turn the aircraft right if you guys remember that the same thing is going to happen here if we stall both wings the wing is not going to stall at exactly the same time. The left wing will be stalling differently or in a different configuration and with different characteristics to the right wing, which means the aircraft may try and spin to the right. Makes sense, right? If you've lost the right wing and you've still got some airflow because of the power, you've still got some airflow over the, the root of the left wing. Now, the root is this inside part. That's the root of the wing. That's the tip of the wing. Generally, the root stalls first and the stall goes out towards the tip. I'm not going to get into wing design and wing configurations here and twist on a wing or anything like that or any complex equations. We're just going to talk about root and tip and we're just looking at what's going to happen. So the wing is not fully stalled over there and it's fully stalled over there. The aircraft's going to want to go into a right-hand spin. What we want to do here is we reduce the power to essentially stall both wings at the same time to, to store both wings correctly or identically that way we're not going to be worried too much about spinning so now once we've done that at that same moment in time we need to push forward on the stick I'm actually going to bring the stick back up so you can see push forward on the stick not in a not in a rough way not like that or you know you can see how rough that is nice and smoothly the smoother you are 
going into a stall and coming out of a stall, the better it's going to be for you. So we push back or push forward on the stick to bring the nose of the aircraft down. Once the nose of the aircraft is coming down, you're going to see that the speed of the aircraft is going to start increasing and we're going to start having lift again. So you're going to notice that the vertical speed indicator, which may have dropped to minus 1,500, minus 2,000, is going to start coming back up for two reasons. One, we're increasing in speed. And two, the angle of attack, the wings are providing lift again because the angle of attack has changed. At that point, slowly bring back maximum power. Now, why are we bringing back maximum power? Do we need to bring back maximum power? No. No, we don't. We can actually recover from a stall without power. It doesn't need power to recover from the stall. The reason we do that is because by applying maximum power, we're going to increase the speed faster. And with that increase in speed, it means that our angle of attack now doesn't have to be as high. As I said, the lift is has a speed function in it, remember? It's got that whole air density multiplied by the velocity squared over 2 multiplied by the wing area multiplied by the coefficient of lift. If we increase the velocity, that means that the lift is increasing at, an, at a given coefficient of lift, which is at a given angle of attack. So that means that we can have a lower angle of attack to actually recover from the stall and our vertical speed therefore is also going to be reduced a lot faster as we recover from that stall and get ourselves back into a safe range. That's why we put the power back on. Once the power is back on and we're getting ourselves out of the stall and you'll see the vertical speed has gone to zero and the power and the speed has come right the way up, we want to get ourselves back into a straight and level configuration using our control. So at this point, we could use the ailerons a bit to straighten ourselves up, the rudder a bit to straighten ourselves up and bring the power back to get ourselves back into our desired configuration. Let's say we wanted to do 100 knots uh, at 2,000 feet. So we'll go back down. We've got ourselves recovered from the stall. Now we get back to 100 knots and then climb. Once we've got ourselves straight and level, stable at 100 knots and zero on the vertical speed, we can then climb back up to 2,000 feet, depending on how much um, altitude, how much altitude and height we lost. That is basically a stall recovery. The next part we need to talk about, and I think this is probably where I'm going to end this video as it's coming up to about half an hour long already, we're going to talk about a secondary stall. Now a secondary stall is basically when a recovery from a stall is not done in a proper manner. So what that means is that, let's say you've, you've put the power up and you've got, or forget, forget putting the power up, let's say the power's down. You've brought the aircraft down and suddenly you're like, yes, I've recovered from the stall, the vertical speed has gone back to zero, everything's fine, and then you pull back up on the stick. So you've pulled back up on the stick and suddenly your airspeed reduces suddenly, you've, you've got yourself in that weird configuration with the wing again where the angle of attack is exceeded, the critical angle of attack, flow separated once again, next thing you know you're in a stall again. That's a secondary stall. When doing flight training, I believe that's a fail on your flight training. So if you do some stall recovery, and obviously you do stall practice when you're doing actual flight training for your private, pilot li private pilot's license or uh, other licenses, whatever they're known around the world, um, when you're doing that student pilot, it's a fail if you end up in a secondary stall because that's, that's bad practice. That means you haven't managed to understand the stall properly and you've been a bit too abrupt, a little bit too hasty on trying to recover the stall. So there's that. We're not going to talk about uh, cross-control stalls just yet because that's a little bit more complicated. So let's not worry about um, and let's not worry about uh, cross-control and any of that. Now, uh, what other things? What else can demonstrate a stall? A natural recovery to a stall. Here we go. Let's think about natural recovery to a stall. Everyone's made paper aeroplanes. If you make a paper aeroplane and you throw it in a very smooth wind, you'll see that the aeroplane will fly. But if you force the aeroplane, maybe by using a, an elevator or something, to lift up, if you make little flaps on the back or something, not flaps as in those type of flaps I'm talking about. I'm talking about little, little flaps that you can lift up and down as elevators control surfaces as it were you have the airplane going up it will climb and climb and climb and then at one point it will stop it will literally stop and then nose down very suddenly in a way that's a stall that is exactly what's happened the aircraft that paper airplane has stalled and it's naturally recovered by nosing itself down and you'll see that it noses down and then as it picks up speed it levels itself out again and that is its own recovery 
from a stall. So there we go. That's that's a way to uh, recover a stall. What else is? What else can I talk about stalls here? I don't think there's much I can talk about in stalls now that we've covered everything uh, about stalls in that sense. So what we're going to do is I'm going to end this video here and in the next video we're actually going to be talking and demonstrating stall recovery. So what we're going to do is now that you know all the all the ideas about stalls, you know the equation, what causes a stall, how what happens to the airflow, um, the th three types of a stall which I didn't obviously talk about accelerated stalls because we don't need to and what we've got to do now is practice this so what we're going to do is we'll take off in the next video we'll climb to maybe 2,000 3,000 feet I think it seems fairly safe we'll climb to 3,000 feet uh, we'll do a we'll do a power on stall and we'll do a power off stall then we'll circle back and we'll land at the airport and this is going to be very important when we land we're going to land at an incredibly slow speed because this is something that needs to be practiced so normally I like to land this aircraft at about 75 knots we're going to land this aircraft at 60 knots very very slow speed and you'll see and you will feel on your own controls what it feels like to be nearing a stall you'll feel the controls are a little bit they don't feel right they may feel a little bit sluggish they may f the aircraft's going to feel a little bit wobbly it's going to be bubble you know it's going to be a uh, buffeting around a little bit stuff like that as you're getting close to this this stall point so you'll be feeling all of this and you'll understand what a stall is and then we'll land the aircraft so i think we'll do that in the next video thank you very much for joining me this time around um leave a comment let me know what you think thumbs up if you're on twitch and follow a like and subscribe on youtube and if you really do like these videos please do consider supporting me on patreon link to that is in the description box below your support would be massively massively appreciated and as like uh, as i said you will get access uh, with the five dollar reward and more you get access to the flight sim tutorials channel on the discord server and there you can ask me all the questions and i'm more than happy to show you all these graphs that i was talking about i can talk about wing twist i can talk about the the way that uh, aircraft are designed to reduce stall characteristics uh, with the use of vortex generators with the use of winglets with you know all these crazy things and all this all this fantastic uh, technology and design that has gone into aircraft to reduce this stall and to make it easier for us as pilots or for us pilots me i suppose as an engineer to actually fly aircraft so i could talk about all that kind of stuff but like i said if you're not really interested in all that and just want to know about stalls now you know about stalls and next week or in the next lesson you will be learning and we'll be practicing everything that we learned in this video thank you very much for watching once again and i will see you guys next time in the ground up advanced flight tutorials